Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Domus trip young and intern time For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, gossip, all the hot topics RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, they got the hottest bloggers It's Jeremy Linhart We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest Go check out the art even tell a neighbor, tell a Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. It's rough when you lose. But I think that, you know, they kind of brought that on themselves with the whole, you know, there was just a lot of cockiness going on all throughout the, the season to the playoffs. And I think they finally got humbled, you know. And, and like I said, we did both pick the Broncos. I said I wanted to see Cam Newton win, but in my, my heart I just I, I felt like the Broncos were going to win. So I did pick the Broncos to win this. So for Cliff, I'm going to give you this last one. This is going to be the last one I'm going to – I'm going to hit you one time. Cliff, that was for you. I will not be dabbing anymore. I, I, I said it on Facebook. You can no longer dab. You can only hit the quan. So you can't dab no more. If you want to dance, you got to hit the quan. Dabbing is dead. It died on that play when uh, Von Miller forced the fumble with that uh, hit on. <laughs> Von Miller did a dab himself. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah, he definitely dabbed all over the Panthers. So no more dabbing. That's done with. Hit the quan in 2016. That's that's how we how we going to do that for, 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 yeah. for the new year. I mean, when you're arrogant like, you know, Cam Newton won't love him or hate him, the people that do hate him are going to come out there. When you're talking trash and you don't back it up, it's a field day for the me media. It's a field day for the internet memes. It's a field day for pretty much everybody <laughs> to get on you. It's kind of like if Floyd Mayweather lost the, the, the what, what would be out there. I mean, we saw even with Ronda Rousey, she was kind of, of a fan favorite, but when you're out there being arrogant and then you lose everyone's coming at you and then now yep. uh, recently on Ellen her saying that she thought about suicide after losing the fight uh, which which is pretty uh, intense to, to go out there and say I mean I, I guess she couldn't identify with herself anymore being I, this undefeated and you know kind of made a fool of herself and, and being hurt and then saying you know her man was there and she needs to have his baby <laughs> As her reason for living, I don't want like, people at home to think I'm laughing at her comments. But you know, I, like, I, first of all, that's a quick transition to is. think about suicide. And then, <laughs> I was, you know, I'm sorry, but I just feel like, listen, man, I'm okay. She, I mean, I don't know how deeply emotionally hurt she was. She did get knocked out pretty badly, but I mean, come on, man, that like. I just, I, you know, maybe I'm stronger than that because I just, I mean, you lost a fight. Like, all right, so you, you thought about committing suicide after losing a fight. Like, you're still on the cover of the new UFC game. You're still in a couple of movies this year. Like, you're still, you're still doing pretty well. Yeah. You know what I mean? So maybe, maybe it's just me, but, I, you know, I'm just like, come on, man, I can't. Well, I'm sure we'll we'll talk more about that when Ladybug comes on the program, since that is her BFF. Yes, it we'll is. We'll see uh, <laughs> what Ladybug has to say about Ronda Rousey. Uh, but this weekend, NBA All-Star Weekend, apparently the NBA wanted to get a lot of guys in trouble by having the, a Valentine's Day All-Star game. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what they were thinking there as far as scheduling on that one. but uh, Broken uh, hearts, that's what they was thinking. Uh, hearts. They're looking to start drama over there, uh, the NBA. But... Uh, but you know what? Like, if you was if you did have a, like a, a side chick, and then you don't have an excuse as to why you wasn't out with her on Valentine's Day, you just be like, oh well, I was watching the game. So then you know. There you go. <laughs> You, 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 you got not a very good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> be a nice try. I mean, I you're, you're, you're still in the doghouse one there. way or the other. Yeah. But um. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was on it was it was a great game. No, we, no, we, we'll, we'll start off with the Friday festivities, having the uh, Rising Stars challenge. Kristaps Porzingis uh, showing why he's one of the front runners for Rookie of the Year, scoring thirty in that game. Then you follow it up with uh, the dunk contest, three point contest, and skills competition. 
you had the bigs versus the smalls in the skills competition, and we had uh, one of the bigs winning it, which was a little bit of a surprise. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to the three-point competition. You had last year Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, the Splash Brothers, going at it. Steph Curry getting the better of it last year, yeah. and now Clay Thompson coming through this year getting revenge and taking the three-point contest. Is he the I better mean, Splash Brother right now? Is he the better? Is that he even got, a real question? <laughs> he got the three-point contest. He took, he took the crown, though. I he mean, did take it in the three-point shot. He's not taking the MVP crown, Yeah, though. well, listen, that's different. Now, if he get the MVP, he get the MVP. But right now, he does have the three-point uh, He would have to have game. a hell of a second half of the season for Klay Thompson <laughs> to get the MVP. But um, it was exciting nonetheless. And, you know, I, I believe it was Charles Barkley in the, uh, on, on the announcer's table saying mm -hmm. they need to switch things around and make the three-point contest last because the dunk contest isn't what it used to be. And you know they, wow. you know the three-point contest is more exciting. That's where it's at. And the contestants in the dunk contest had something to say about that. I think they did this well, two was, of them anyway. Yeah, well, definitely. Um, Aaron Gordon and Aaron, uh, Zach Aaron Levine. Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine going at it, uh, trying to do tiebreaker after tiebreaker and getting yeah. tens across the board with uh, some phenomenal dunks, uh, free mm -hmm. throw line dunks and. Uh, Aaron Gordon, I mean, I, th I think they both should have won. I mean, it was really... Listen. Uh, I, I think Aaron Gordon kind of got screwed because it didn't look that fancy, the dunk where he didn't get all tens, where he pumped it behind them, brought it all the way down, and then back up. I mean, that, back that up. is actually pretty hard to do. Exactly. Like, it just doesn't look, all, yeah. it doesn't look as fancy as, like, a between the legs or behind the back. Yeah, they, but he did the behind the back kind of so sitting like, on the ball behind the back. Yeah. His legs were so high up. <laughs> yeah. Almost every Every dunk, his head was by the rim. He was mm -hmm. getting so much hops there, and it was just definitely one of the most exciting dunk contests I've ever seen, not just in recent years, but uh, with them two going at it. I mean, these are every time I think of the dunk contest, I think, well, what else can you do? How many times are we going to see between the legs and you know behind the back, whatever, and then they go and do things that we, we haven't seen before, which was... Uh, Pretty amazing. Well, first of all, the fact that Aaron Gordon included the mascot in those uh, in those last yep. uh, couple of dunks, this is why. First, I, I don't even think that it should have went to overtime. Honestly, I feel like, I mean, on the hoverboard with the mascot spinning around yeah, and, and he grabs it, it, and then exactly. like you got to time that perfectly. Like, I mean, that hands down. And then to come right back after that and just sit, oh my goodness, like he completely turned up the dunk contest. I thought that, and, and Zach Levine kind of did the same dunk that he did um, for that, that first dunk, just with the off the alley-oop, but I was like, nah, I mean, I could have seen, it. I would have I maybe gave that like a 48-49. Like, I don't think we would have even went to overtime, but I mean, it did, and I did like the excitement, but I, I think that uh, Aaron Gordon should have won, but I am looking forward to seeing the rematch now next year. Like, I think they definitely brought new life back to the dunk contest. You know, everybody's talking about they got that uh, MJ, Dominique Wilkins kind of feel. So I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing them go at it again. I want to see, actually, I, I want to see Orlando and uh, Minnesota play now because I want to see if somebody's going to try to dunk on the other one in the game when it really counts. Yeah, I think I mean, that, that, that's going to be the question. It'd be nice to see some posterizing there, but definitely uh, an exciting back-to-back. -back. I, I am in agreement with you. I think Aaron Gordon should have won as well. But Zach Levine with a different uh, variety of free throw line dunks. And free throw line dunks are always something impressive, even if you're not doing something fancy uh, combining with it. And he was adding to the mix, too. So uh, it's definitely a very impressive dunk contest. The dunk contest is officially back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope both contestants are healthy and ready to go next year. And maybe uh, we see a, a, another person, a third person out there, one of, maybe a young rookie or something, throw their name into the ring and then and see what happens with that. But I'm definitely looking forward to future dunk contests, definitely back alive. But the trade deadline was today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Blake Griffin was in talks for trade. Carmelo Anthony was in talks for trade. Dwight Howard was in talks for trade. No big blockbuster trades took place. Um what do you think out of the minor trades that we've seen was the most significant? Uh, I mean, I like the, the Jeff Green to, uh, to the Clippers. I think that he's going to be a, a big boost for the, for the Clippers. 
So I, I would say I would say that one. Um, and then I mean I do like Shannon Fry because I know that's what LeBron wanted because he's he's used to having that stretch four that could that can uh, shoot the three. So I think that he's going to actually be a, a, a really big help for the Cavs. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, other than that, I mean Brandon Jennings. I mean if if he can actually get back to to where he was then um, I think he can actually really contribute in Orlando if he can get back into that uh, starting spot. But no, no major moves were, were made, um, so it's not really nothing too crazy. I mean, I was hoping that, uh, that the Cavs would have traded Kevin Love to Boston and then brought Melo over in, uh, in that three-team uh, trade. I think that would have been crazy. But, you know, yeah, it, I mean, it Melo would is. have to really sign off on that. There was no trade yeah. clause, and he wasn't looking like he. He figured he'd rather stay with the Knicks and keep losing for another forty years. I mean, he's he, <laughs> so. New York is still home to him, and it, if he goes over to Cleveland, there's no there's no guarantee, no matter what team you're with, that you're going to win the championship. I mean, we've seen LeBron James lose in the finals repeated times. I have to emphasize that. But he does have, he does have, he does have rings. He does. How many does Melo have? He needs, he, I'm not a Melo fan. If he gets one more, he'll have one more than the entire Knicks organization though, if he gets one more. That that is true. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, I don't want, you know, I don't want to bring your spirits down with that stat, man, but, you know, it, 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 it does happen from time to time. But I told you guys earlier that the Riot Squad was definitely going to be in the building. And uh, Bino has just walked in. So we're looking forward to chopping it up with him, talking about he, what he's got going on, talking about the Riot Squad. Um, but we got a little video that we're going we gonna to watch first because uh, Bino shut it down in Queens a couple of weeks ago. We told y'all we was out at, at uh, Blackthorn in Queens. I was surprised to see Bino out there, so it was, it was definitely a good look. We reached out to him, and he showed us love, said he would come on to the show. So we're going to show a little bit of that uh, performance footage from uh, Black Thorn. Shout out to uh, H2O, because that was uh, his event with uh, Graf, Graf and friends out there. So shout out to H2O for that one. And we're going to jump into that footage, and when we come back... Yo, drop that, K.O. I'm a 
Changed drugs about eight months ago, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm still riding. If you got love, fucking change drugs. I want to get a yay on three. One, two, three. Yay! Yeah. Drop that. Looking on the interstate, I'm killing with them bricks. Hey, Looking hey, with hey, the flower. Hey, if you need a fix, bro. Bottom of the night. Shop alone, rest the pump. You were talking, and I barely ever missed. What's going on? Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Real Fans Real Talk live on uh, BPN right now. Yeah. And you see who we got sitting with us on the set right <laughs> yeah, now. Man. Squad up. Squad up. <laughs> what's going yeah, on, what's man? Yeah, good, bro? Yo, I got I got I got to tell you, you know, folks at home, cuz I don't want to age or date myself too much. I don't need y'all know <laughs> how old I am. But back in my heyday, you know, I was after I finished school, I was living in Hempstead. Okay. And um Couple of like we was kind of from all over because I'm from Brooklyn, but some of my 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 roommates was like from Queens and whatnot. So we was just on this whole stack bundles yeah. riot squad yeah. wave. Like everything was all about <laughs> the riot squad. And it don't matter what song it was, it was all all riot squad. So this is I definitely appreciate it, man. I appreciate a privilege. It for real, man. I appreciate you know what I mean? It. To have you sitting down with us, shopping yeah. it up, and definitely rest in peace, stack bundles. Rest in peace, chinks drugs. Yeah. That's how we gonna Without start this doubt. off. Yeah, you know so. With that being said, just tell, I mean, just tell us, for, you know, what's going on with the with with the riot squad right now. Yeah, we um, we just giving this thing a little facelift. Know what I'm saying? Getting it back in order. Like we took two big losses, me and the stack and chink. So I'm just back at the drawing board with it, man. Getting it, getting it, getting it going again. I'm motivated again. Know what I'm saying? Because I want to step away from hip hop. Like after the chink situation that happened. I wasn't really in the groove of things, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know which way to go, but I knew my bros wouldn't want me to give up. So I just, you know what I mean, snapped out of it and just put it through full force, you know what I'm saying? So you can expect some new music from me and Core as well, you know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to drop this Gold Blooded Project okay. either late March or early April, man. It's going to be it's gonna be the one, I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? Well, I was just about to ask you, That's uh, a fact. Core 2 Jeezy's. He's yeah, he's working, he, he working on the I Am Legend project. I got okay. probably two joints on that. And, um, he on my project, and then we just going to get it going. Then I'm going to drop mine, so he's going to drop his, and then we're going to try to put a Riot Squad situation together for the summertime, you know what I mean, when it's get hot. Is there going to be new members in the Riot Squad? Yeah, I'm looking to, um, the, 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 um, to get with the you know what I mean? If you're a producer, you're an artist, a singer, I'm looking to um get with you, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Trying to rebuild this whole thing, you know what I mean? Put a couple of people down with the situation and get it going. So so now I know you know, taking taking those losses is hard and now it's good that you that you finally back yeah. and about to start putting out now you've been you've been performing yeah. as of late. Um how's that how's that coming? Like when is it gonna be the, the next uh, performance that you're gonna Um I got a performance um March third in Brooklyn okay. and black at, at the Black Thorn as a Queens Get the Money concert. I'm okay. performing in that. I'm headlining that with Graf and um Brooklyn, I'm doing it with um, DJ Starks, DJ Self. They're doing um hottest in New York um, concert, you know okay. what I'm saying? So if you you in the area, just come through, you know what I'm saying? Definitely Go in there and tear that down. So I'm just out here trying to touch the people again, you feel me? Okay. That's definitely good. Now, I want to I wanna go back because I, I heard that, you know, back in the day, you used to play basketball. Yeah. Now, somebody told me that you was actually good enough to go pro. Yeah. Is that like... So See, what, um... Like a lot of people that you see in the league now, I play with like Ben Gordon, Charlie okay. Villanueva, my man Lenny Cook, um, okay. Omar Cook, Andre Barrett, Talik Brown, like Luau Dang. Me and him went to the same prep school. Okay. So, so I used to um play ball like hard, really hard, like from because I was like seventh grade. I grew from like five eleven to six three in one summer. <laughs> I went down south. I was wearing like a size nine and a half. I came back wearing eleven. I just sprouted up. I don't like I had growth spurts. I had problems like pains in my knees and my hands. And the doctor said I was gonna grow to be like six seven, six eight, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm six six and a half now, so he was a little off, but I mean I he was, he was, he was close though, <laughs> yeah. he was close. So now but what now what happens? Injuries? No, nah, I was like I started doing the music and, and, and school and school wasn't really like my passion and everything, like with okay. the ball playing thing. But I still get on the court and do my thing. Yeah. And then when I went to Blair Academy, and I went there for six months. It didn't work out. They reclassified me as a, um, a senior. And I was going to go to another prep school and probably go to a JUCO. This never happened. I just started doing the music thing. But basketball is still my passion. I, I love it to you're death. still balling? Yeah. 
Uh, now we wish you, you should have played in the, in the ball for peace. Uh, I, could, I just game. had knee surgery. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, right, but right. I'm, I'm, I'm good now, so I should be back in the summertime. I'm playing the, uh, the, the joint um, Superstar J always do okay. every year. I mean, give back to the kids. I'm definitely going to do that. Gotcha. Now, do you, do you still, do any of the guys that you play with, do, do you guys ever, like, play any scrimmages or anything like that? No, nah, I, so I bumped into Charlie and Dyke, man, last summer. We got the kick it. I ain't seen him in a long time, and we really got the kick it, man. Okay. Exchange numbers, you know what I'm saying? That's my boy right there. All right, so they say a lot of people don't know that. You know, I, I, when I got to where I said, I'm going to have to ask him this to get yeah. the confirmation if you was balling like that. Yeah, you can that, Google they, it. Daryl Bino, man, Far Rockaway High School. They definitely told me that, that you that you, yeah. you know, had, had that, that level of talent. Yeah, all so. Queens, second team, all city. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice, we was nice. doing it. So it's another reason for you guys to make sure you get your tickets early for next year's Wall for Peace now. Yeah, that's There's rumors fact. that they might have a dunk contest this year. You, would Ooh. you be in that too? Or? Yeah, I'd definitely try to do that. <laughs> that's going to be crazy. <laughs> See a 360 from yeah. the free throw line for a seven? <laughs> You got to, yeah. You might have to, have to have to start the training now to yeah. get the three sixties in. That's, yeah, I'm that's definitely. Kinda, that's that's kind of rough. I'm about to get back in basketball shape. When I do that, you know. So now, did you did you did you watch the All Star game this weekend? Yeah, I watched shades of it, like to the third quarter. Was you going for the East or the West? The East. All right. I mean, it sucks as I was going for the I East. I live too. out there, so yeah. don't go there. Like, <laughs> so yeah. Do you, do you feel like the the All Star game? Like the, the the lack of defense that's being played is it getting like crazy? Cause they almost hit two hundred points. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, it definitely get like I guess it's more showmanship. Like when Jordan was playing, like people was trying to win back yeah. then. You feel me? But you know the level of competition with the West Coast has always been like slightly better because yeah. just like they got the best power forwards. It seemed like, but I don't know. It's just. They, they they play hard for it some seems reason. This year, like the East had the better roster. I yeah. think at least starting lineup. Yeah, wise, definitely. But at the Bench. there was really no defense until yeah. the fourth quarter. Yeah. And by that point, the West already got it, kind of got a comfortable lead, and just didn't allow them to come back. Yeah. That's when the defense stepped up. But I think if they were playing for real, you know, the whole game defense mm -hmm. wise, I think the East could have came out with it. But yeah. there's a lot of times where they're just like literally standing there and letting guys go. Yeah, to like the oh, yeah. excuse me, yeah. you wanted a dunk? Yeah. Uh, let me get out of your way. Like, you know, <laughs> exactly. so it's, it's obviously record-breaking, high scoring, and it's great to see a lot of dunks. It's great to see, you know, the alley-oops and, you know, the fancy plays and everything. It's exciting, but at the same time, uh, the competition level just isn't there. I mean, yeah. it should probably, I don't know what, uh, I mean, I, I get that, you know, the, even in previous years, you would mm -hmm. you would slack off, but this year on on the defensive side, but this year it was just kind of ridiculous, and they were yeah. just you know every year they kind of wait till the fourth quarter to start playing for real. Like the mid the mid nineties and late night, like they yeah. was trying to win. It was yeah, like it a real. Like, it wasn't no exhi exhibition game. They was really trying to go hard, hard fouls, all that. You feel me? They was they was bowling. Yeah. So now, all right, now being from New York, being from Queens, are you a Knicks fan? Yeah, I'm a Knicks fan. I, is I'm is a, it hard for you being a Knicks fan? Not, not really. I, I like the Knicks because I'm, I'm really a proud of myself on New York, but I'm more of a, a players person. I like okay. players, like, besides teams. Like, I, lo I love Carmelo Anthony, you feel me? Okay. I went to Nike basketball camp with him when he was a young, you hear me? Okay. Oh, so you played yeah, it? Yeah, you played? I played with him before, okay. yeah. I, I like him. I like his game. Who, 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 who won that battle when you played against Melo? We never played. We played on the same team. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So, so I never played against him. Yeah. Otherwise, you, play? you probably wouldn't be a fan. <laughs> <laughs> who did you play against that you schooled? Um, see, I never got to play play against LeBron. Who I played against at school? Charlie. I used to give him buckets because he was he was he was he was skinny. So I used so, to yeah. punish him in the paint. I used to take advantage. You feel me? No. And what position did you play at the time? I played power forward. Okay. Center so, and small forward if need be. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of. Well, shout out to the Knicks, man. I just hope they get it together. Like I, I became more of a fan harder like when Marbury went there because I actually like Marbury as a basketball player. Yeah, I did. You know so, what? Yeah. I can't remember. I did. I did like Marbury there. You know, and he's actually doing well right yeah, there, right was, now yeah. in China. He's like who won like three championships in a mm -hmm. row out in yeah. China. So yeah, he's the Michael before. Jordan of China, yeah. basically. But uh, he just can't get it. It's, I don't know. I don't know why it's so hard for for the Knicks to to get it done. And then when they get the some, certain plays that was like really shaking out on other teams, it's just like sometimes yeah. they come here and they just get. It's like they they were good. They come to the Knicks, they suck. They or they'll come to the they'll be on the Knicks, be regular, and then they'll mm -hmm. go someplace else. Yeah, and, and blow be, up. Yeah. See, they got to get back to 
the Charles Oakley, Derek Harper days. You feel me? Mm -hmm. When you come down yeah. to this paint, you're going to leave with a, 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 a dislocated finger thinking yeah. you're going to score and do all this fancy stuff down no the back of that heart. Yeah, now yeah that's, that's, what, that's when it was really yeah. like hard in the, the paint. Used to and the Knicks was like brutal, you feel yeah. me? Like, they now was putting it down, you feel used me? to get penalized if they helped the opponent up. Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace to Anthony Mason. I was playing with him in Hunter College. I was like in the 10th grade. Yeah, I went to reach for the ball. He slapped my hand so hard, I thought he <laughs> broke it. And like in nine places, I said, "Yo, he is strong." Yeah. Shout like out, he, yo. like he, he was a brute. You feel me? Like yeah. he was six that, eight, solid. That's I was a, like, "That's a, that's a big boy." It's definitely shoulders like this. You wasn't getting show. past him. I was like, "Damn." Yeah. So I could, yeah. I, I could, I can't. He looked imagine. little on TV. He, 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 he was that deal. And they're supposed to actually, they're supposed to be naming the street after uh, Anthony Mason. And uh, in Queens. In Queens, yeah. Yeah, I was just I was just reading that, so that's. We went to um, Springfield yeah. High School. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that's definitely. Rest in peace, Anthony Mason, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Queens is Queens, man. Yeah, y'all did have a lot of ballers coming coming yeah, out of definitely. Queens too. Kenny so. Anderson. Yep. Another Kenny one. Smith, Ron Artest, Lamar yeah. Odom. Um, let's go on. I'm glad Lamar Odom is uh, bouncing yeah, back now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. After his uh, his his situation. Yeah, so God bless him. Yeah. That's a good look. He's actually doing well. He made his uh, first public appearance since uh, he was hospitalized. Yeah, at the um, so at the garden. Yeah. That was a that was a good good look for uh, for Lamar, Lamar. Now, when was it that you realized that music was where you're gonna put your all into and, and give up basketball? Probably like like twelfth grade. Like I was on on a cusp, like dealing with the females and then slacking off in school and then like my heart wasn't into it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But I always loved basketball. It's just like I just needed to focus up and get the discipline to go to the next level. I knew I could have did it, but it's just I guess it wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, the music industry is very competitive, very tough. Yeah. Um, what kept you motivated, and then how, how eventually did you link up with uh, Chinks and Stack Bundle? Like, um, me and Stack was doing music before we even did Riot Squad because when he got kicked out of the high school we went to, his man was telling me he was doing music, so I went to Stack House and we wrote a couple of records together. And this was the days when um, he had graduated and then he flew to, flew to um, Chicago. He was living with Lupe at the time, Lupe Fiasco. Okay. So when he did the first deal over there with um, Arista, first and 15th, he had came back to New York and we started going, like really taking it serious. Like we wasn't taking it serious, just writing rhymes. But when we started learning like song format and really like how to make a song and create it, yeah. then we started taking it serious. Then Chinks was like back and forth in jail, like DFY bids and I ain't seen him in like 10 years, but I knew Chinks before I actually knew Stack. Okay. So Cole had brung Chinks around probably like 2004. Mm -hmm. Chinks on the street was for like a good year before he had to do his four years. So um, we all linked up, and then we we started the Riot Squad with the four of us. Whose idea was it to actually call it the Riot Squad? And See, it was as far before it was me, Mike Mills, Stack, Core Two Gs, and Bishop. Okay. We were called Starting Five, like like a starting like a five yeah. basketball team. It was five different places from Far Rockaway. I was from Edgemere. Stack was from Red Fern. Mike Mills from Cornega. Um, Bishop was from Central and um, calls from Gateway. Okay. So we just, we wasn't a rap group, we was just a team, and then whoever, whoever got the deal first, whoever got hot first, we was gonna get behind it and like t kick the goal down. So they left with um, um, Creative Differences, um, Mike Mills and Bishop. Okay. So it was, it was only three of us. So when Cole started bringing Chinks around, then we, we, had, we had to come up with a name. So it was a team called Reference Riot Squad from Stack Hood. They used to get money, like boots, yeah. still clothes, they fly, you know what I'm saying? So we we, adopt, we adopted that name and started calling it Rockaway Riot Squad. And then we took the RRS and made it this Riot Squad because we wanted to expand it. We might want to sign an artist from Cali or Canada or New Orleans, you feel me? Now, there was a there was an issue from back in the day where, uh, with, with Wayne and Cash Money when the yeah, whole yeah, squad they, up they, thing. Yeah, um, they had a... Uh, they was calling themselves Squad Up. Yeah. So Stack was, we was calling ourselves Riot Squad, but Stack, I mean, um, Squad Up was our moniker. Yeah. So they had made a, a diss record. We ended up bumping in the gutter gutter at, um, on a, the, the tour with Jeezy and Wayne, and he mm. came out with Slim Thug. Stack pulled him to the side and talked to him about it. It wasn't about nothing, you feel me? <laughs> so. Had a conversation, everything, yeah. everything is good. We all good. Now, all right, and then Stack starts, uh, 
um, messing with with Dipset. Yeah. Now, and I feel like, and I like, I've, I had conversations with people about this all the time. I feel like Dipset kind of got their swag from Stack. <laughs> and a lot of people, a lot of people said this too. But I mean, which, being being around Stack and like, what's what's your take on that? Like what? Well, like you know, like Jim Jewels and, and, and Cam, like they was like fly dudes. You feel me? Yeah. You no know, Hall and flashy dudes. You know what I'm saying, when Stack came around with Jim, is just like he tapped more into Jim youth. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Jim seen Stack in him, like he was Stack like in the younger days. So gotcha. it just gave him that research, resurgence. Him and uh, Max B, and then they just formulated that 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 type of bond, and then. They was doing music. The energy was right. Yeah. They um coming up with new styles and ways to dress, and you like it just took off from there. You feel me? So I guess they they fed off each other energy. You feel me? Yeah. And then Stack was doing a lot of a lot of the writing at that time. Like Jim Jim used to write his own music. Like he'd just wake up out of sleep and mm -hmm. just come with a verse and just go in and knock it out. Like Max and Stack Jaw was like. It was just more of the vibe, you understand? Cause you like, I come around, I come to the studio, mm -hmm. I can write music all day, but you see a bunch of youngers in the studio, they giving you new ideas and you feeding yeah. off the energy and it's everybody just feeding off the energy going back, yo, yo, you should say it like this, yo, yo, I got yeah. this beat, I got the hook for this, you know what I'm saying? Cause that was a really good time Yeah. for, for Dipset, that was like when they were really at the, at the Yeah, peak. like that, that, the Bird Gang thing was gonna be something special. Now, do you still um, associate with Max B? Um, I ain't speak to Max since 2009. Actually, I spoke to him on the phone with um, when French had him on the phone. Probably it was like 2014. We was in a hotel. I had the chance to speak to him. Okay. And you wouldn't even believe he locked up. Man, he act like he on the street. Man, he's That's like the wave right there. Yeah. That's That's shout out to Max B, man. Right and then, all right. So now I want to get back into to your music. Yeah. The project you got coming out. You said in March it's gonna. It's called Gold Blooded. Okay. Is there any features on the on the album? Um, so far I got um the usual suspects. I got Chanks on there. I got Core. Um, me and Davies got a crazy joint together called okay. Boyfriend Number Two. When, when I hear this, we gonna we gonna tear the streets down with this one. Um, I'm gonna get in with um Trey Pizzy and Smoke Dizzard next week. Okay. And um, probably knock something out. We're gonna do something, do something special. Who else I got on the joint? I got Young Joey on the joint. Got this um, another young boy out of Queens called Alejandro. Okay. Yeah, he, um, he blessed me with a hook of some dope, some dopeness, you know what I'm saying? Is there anybody who's not on the project right now that you want to a song with? Um, I definitely wanna um, probably get a joint with Manolo, you know what I mean? We from the same hood. Definitely, definitely get, yeah, doing his thing yeah, right now definitely too. get him on the joint. Um, who else? What's I like out there? Well, tell me, who is who right now is your top five? So top Jay five. doesn't have his top five <laughs> yeah. going on. Right, who's yours? Uh, Stack, Biggie, Prodigy, um, Nas. Probably Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Yeah. I mean, that's, well, he don't really do, do yeah, that. Yeah, but, but like, I guess, his, listen, like, I guess if, yeah. his music was just honest to me, you feel me? Okay. Like, when I, when I, when I listen to him, I get in a, in, a, in a real creative zone, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I got you. And, and he make me push my ideas forward, you know what I mean, listen, listen to his yeah, music. The, but the inspirational. If you, don't want, if you want to use another rapper, probably... <sighs> Probably go with Pun. Okay. Pun was special. Yeah, I definitely. Pun was one of the nicest yeah. rappers. To, like, what, to what you talking about lyricism, I have to give it to probably Pun, hmm. Cool G Rap. Eminem is a crazy lyricist, too. Like, the word, like, they'd take one word and, and make yeah. it rap for like 16 minutes straight. I'm yeah. like, that, that's like unheard of. T.I., he's a lyricist, too. If you really listen to him, to be yeah. a Southern artist, like, he he he, he, he can rap crazy. They, uh, a, a, couple, was a couple years ago now, they had him, Double uh, XL was talking about he's like the Jay-Z of the South, so. Like, he, he he really goes off. Definitely, I could I could agree with you. You know they don't really, like, give Southern artists their props on lyricism, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Besides, well, like, Wayne and, yeah, Andre 3000, yeah, 3000, yeah definitely. He's, like, one of the best lyricists yeah. to do it, so. yeah. Definitely got got to give respect to Andre. Yeah, definitely. Now, Stacks. Stacks, you started with him originally, kind mm -hmm. of learned how to advance in the music industry mm -hmm. with him. 
what was it like after losing him and you know kind of trying to stay motivated in, in the industry like when, when when that happened with stack like I was at a point I was like super depressed I already had a, a, a um a, a, a case I had called already prior to that you know what I mean the day I got indicted was the day stack got murdered so my mindset was just like I don't even know what to do like you know what I'm saying like I was angry I had like murder on my mind like I had this like everything I just wasn't even in a music zone it took me like to like August September to snap out of it because I know like him he's like one of the hardest workers I've ever been around yeah. and he wouldn't want nobody to stop you know what I'm saying because the, the greatest thing he left everybody was legacy and a platform to come out here and shake out so like I, I can't let him die in vain and then like then that that's we lost twice then you feel me yeah now what do you what do you think about um like now because with, with the stack situation um and then shinks like you know there's a lot of the talk about like rappers going back to their hoods and mm -hmm. and, and whatnot because i mean there's still the violence is still going yeah. on it's still it's still crazy out there so like what do you think like do you, does that make you not want to be in the hood like that it's just like sometimes like god plan is god plan like some yeah. things be inevitable like you can be in Brooklyn and, and the crane could fall and it could happen, but yeah. um, Stack was just a, just a lovable guy, you feel me? He didn't want to leave unless everybody was straight. That's what this guy, he'd just hop out anywhere. What's up, family? Like, everybody, like, he just light up the room. He'd come in here, and y'all think y'all knew this kid for, like, four years, man. Like, he just, he had that walk, that swag mm -hmm. with him, this everybody loved him, you know what I'm saying? Like, Chanks wasn't really in the hood like that. He was getting to his money and then recording and then, then trying to make everything possible and, and, and pave the way for us and everybody, you know what I'm saying? It's just a tragic moment happened coming from a nightclub, you feel me? Yeah. Definitely understand. Well, now, we do we do got um, a couple other videos that we got to show because Ballin' for Peace did just pass. Mm -hmm. So we're going to jump into really quick. Well, we've actually uh, I checked with the control and we got a... Uh, my fight video up there. Oh, I know. So we going to the to the fight right uh, now. I'm not exactly proud of how I looked <laughs> in the ring, but the, <laughs> the, the, the Golden Gloves took place last week. That's why we didn't have a live shoot. Um, but I, I did it. I talked about doing it. I stepped in the ring, <laughs> and we, we got the footage for you guys. Now I look a little bit big because in the amateurs you have these giant jock straps that kind of wrap all the way yeah. around. So. <laughs> You know, I, I look a lot bigger than I am, but... Listen, at least uh, the video will go viral. It's all good. You know, you got to look at the positives in this uh in this There you thing. go. But, uh, so we're going, we, all right, so we're going with, into the Golden Gloves right Without right further now. ado, um, and we're, we're going to have Ladybug when we come back. I know uh, Twitter and everybody always wondering where Ladybug <laughs> is because, you know, she's got her whole huge following and stuff. So uh, we're, we're going to play... Uh, my fight, and when we come back, uh, we'll have Ladybug <laughs> on the program as well. <laughs> All right.
on champion Aaron Davis there in the corner, W 1990 WBA uh, welterweight champion of the world. That's my uh, trainer. Um, it was a hell of an experience, but uh, I mean, I think if I would have gotten matched up with somebody else, with some of the other competition that was out there, I definitely would have won. They put me up against the guy who had eight amateur fights. If you had ten or less, you could fight in the novice. And uh, he spars with professionals. I mean, he does it all day, every day. And I do a lot of other things aside from boxing. I think, you know, it's the same. It was the first fight. I wish I would have gotten matched up with somebody different. Maybe I would have had a better chance. But it is what it is. Uh, you got to play the, the hand that you're dealt in life. And that's who I was fighting. And... Unfortunately, it was an L, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know... You, this time. you got in the ring, man. That's what you counts did, you got, you yeah. got in the ring. You know, it's all good, man. I was out there, I was racing, I was, pr I was proud of you getting into the ring. Oh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's all good, man. You had the heart to get in there. A lot of people don't even have the heart to yeah. get Chip's into the ring. Chip's not doing that. Just not. So, first of all... <laughs> if you want to get in with me, <laughs> sure, if you want to settle some score... If I wanted score. to go in, I would have I did it, you know, but I just got other things going on. I got so, other things going on. Yeah, Rubbing man. your knee, yeah. <laughs> you got Shoot. other things going on. I'm out here working. I can't be up in the, in, in the Golden Gloves right now. I ain't got time for that. I, you know, I'm, I'm teaching these kids out here, all right? So I ain't got time for that. So, it's all that, good. That's a good excuse, Trip. <laughs> But hey. we, we do have Ladybug social media. You can relax now. Ladybug is on the program. Uh, welcome <laughs> back to the show, Ladybug. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's been a little while. How are you guys doing? How you doing? Pretty I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been a little while. You know, I've been racking up on the news. Just, uh, I love the super, I mean, ooh, look, you hear me? <laughs> I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm talking about the wrong things right now, but <laughs> I just wanted to say first and foremost, big shout out uh, to the pregame tomorrow. That's all I want to say. But on to the rumor mill. And it's not really a rumor. It's a fact. Uh, Manny Pacquiao got dropped by Nike Whoa. for his, yeah, for his comments on social media. Basically, um, you know, it's quote unquote, he said, uh, gays are worse than animals. So that backlash automatically <laughs> Uh, you know, made Nike say, you know what, that's it. And, uh, you know, he, Nike had a lot of support. Magic Johnson, you know, stepped up and he was like, you know what, I, I agree with Nike for doing that. That was wrong. And, you know, as a corporation, they just, you know, should not tolerate that. And, you know, he said he's not going to watch any more Pacquiao fights. And, uh, you know, it's also uh, another loss for him because he's trying to run for Senate in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So he's just taking losses internationally now. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I don't know if he, you know, people say things in the heat <laughs> of the moment, but especially as a celebrity, you're always being watched. Yeah. You know, you're always, you know, somebody's always looking. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's really jumping out the window, yeah. going out there saying mm -hmm. something like that. That's, yeah. that's just crazy. <laughs> I mean, he might keep the pistachio thing because they'll just figure that he's nuts. And, you know. yeah. Hey, Mark, you didn't you see yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think everyone else will probably drop him though. Yeah, that 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 was just crazy for him to to do that. That's not even like you know Kobe got into a, a little bit of trouble for you know calling you know you know the f word or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's like you know he was t talking to another player. He just straight disrespecting the entire LGBT community with that. So you yeah. know. It's nobody is going to stand for that. Nike is not playing because they're not trying to start losing behind Manny Pacquiao. He's mm -hmm. about to be out of boxing anyway, so he's about to not be relevant anymore anyway. <laughs> I mean, after, <laughs> after the whole Mayweather out fight, he's going to be relevant. Too, yeah. that's, he I, mean, yeah. politi he, he, I mean, he's a congressman. He's already a politician. You can mm -hmm. go and say something bold and stupid like that. Yeah, that's, that's just crazy. He's getting you know, his, uh, his I, mean, I guess he's back to drinking. Right I know now. he quit drinking for a while. No, that's <laughs> what it was. <laughs> no. Was, and she started going downhill when he left the Hennessy alone. After he stopped messing with the Henny, then that's when he everything, it was a snowball effect. He started losing the fights. He came back on it. No, but they know he did. He did immediately apologize. He went back on social media. You know, he, had, you <laughs> he know. realized the checks was about to be lost. <laughs> but, yeah, so he, he immediately apologized. He was like, you know what, that was out of line. That was totally, you know, uncalled for. He truly apologized. But, you know, what's done is done. No, that's you know, what he meant. It. He meant that because that's what he believed, and he said that you can't come apologizing because you realize, oh man, the check's about to stop coming in. So let me just go yeah. back and apologize. That's what you meant to say. That they say done. you have free speech, but that was a very expensive treat. A yeah. tweet mm -hmm. that was not free at all. Yeah. <laughs> that cost him a lot of money. 
And uh, yeah. I know you guys were touching on it earlier, my BFF. And don't, don't talk about my BFF behind my back like I'm not, that. I'm just saying, like, I just You're right there. What are you talking yeah. about? I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't on, on, the, I wasn't mic, on but... the set. But still, anyway, <laughs> my girl Wanda, I love her. And, yes, yeah, she got really emotional on Ellen. It's not funny, Trip. She got really funny. emotional on Ellen because she really did. Um, oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Had it. You know, she... She thought about suicide. It's just the thing that was kind of outrageous to me. And don't get me wrong. I'm a female. I have my emotions. We all go through our emotions. <laughs> but she said, you know, while she was in the bed, she seen her man. What? And her man, you know, she looked at him and she said, you know what? I need to give him babies. I need to stay alive. So, um, yeah. So, so that why was is she her. fighting again? She's, she's back training. She wants to rematch. <laughs> But she said that was her. That was her defined the moment she was laughing. Obviously, uh, and she said, Holly Holm, yeah. you know, kicked the sense mm -hmm. out of her with that <laughs> kick. That you know, I just fight. say, hey, Travis Brown is, is uh, one of a kind, and that's all. That's all I'm gonna <laughs> say because if you're in the hospital laying down and you're just like, okay, I want to end it all. I lost this fight. My career's over. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, don't, I, can't, I can't see myself go on. And you just look at the man and you're just like. I want to get some babies. She's still doing well, I'm going to do this. It, you know, it sounds pretty far-fetched, but all she did, all everybody needs their own motivation. You can't judge someone's motivation, I guess. So. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to say this, and I say this every week. Uh, I'm down with the money team. That's <laughs> completely <laughs> irrelevant because the main one is not even. That's all I'm going to say, man. Mentioned in this comment. But yeah, you see, if, it's if, always if a guy feels like he's a fighter, he's a fighter. That's all I'm going to say. 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 That's all I mean, at the same time, you know, I guess Ellen is the perfect place to talk about that stuff. Uh, <laughs> Did she dance she, with Ellen? Because, you know, Ellen has got a way of making everybody dance on her show. So. No, I don't th I you think that's... You need to live, you need to dance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, she be all Talking right. about uh, living and dancing, um, you know, there was the whole uh, Beyonce issue with her new video and all the controversy going on. And there was supposed to be a, a, a anti Beyonce <laughs> protest, yeah. protest <laughs> no, in front of the NFL headquarters. <laughs> so, you know, it was eight to four, you know, it was going to be a whole bunch of people, and only three people showed up. <laughs> First of all, people got to realize how strong the Beehive actually is. Yeah, it is. All right? You ain't just coming out and protesting Beyonce well, like the, that. The, the Beehive showed up, too. Yeah, and that was the those, thing. Those people, those were anti anti-protesters. Yeah. So, on. it was funny. And, you know, it was a rainy day. It was a very messy day. And, you know, the three protesters didn't even come at the same time. It was like one person. Yeah. <laughs> Then two hours later, it was another person. It was like a scene out of them old westerns where the, the haystacks yeah. start blowing in the in the <laughs> wind. Like, it was nobody but else But then, you know, the pro-Beyonce, the beehive, as they say, were just, like, all over. Like, it's real. The, it's you real know, <laughs> she's supporting, she's here, and, it, you know, they're real. The beehive, you guys, are loyal. That's, yeah. that's it. But, um, yeah, that was, that was crazy. W waste of taxpayers' dollars having the police. And yeah, yeah, they had the whole barricades the and escorts and for three people. But, you know, I feel like in the same note, those three people had so much press and so much media. Like, they got their 15 <laughs> seconds of fame. I'm not going to say minutes. 15 <laughs> seconds of fame because, you know, the pro Beyonce, they was just there. They but those that one person that said, no, I'm against her, all the media. So what's going on? So why do you feel this way? And then, you know, they're like, yeah, I don't like Beyonce. I don't <laughs> like her. Like, I do not like her. And it's like, come on, really? It's real. It's really? real. Yeah, it was real for them three people out there. It was real people for those three people. Gotta, people gotta stop. They're like, probably going to get coffee and just bumped into yeah, it and we got on the mic. Yeah, we saw the cameras and yeah, was like, oh. you know what, let me get on. <laughs> but, yeah, so, um, and uh, a little bit of, like, uh, I want to say, tasteful news you know you guys seen the new sports illustrated photos mm -hmm. and um you know I i'm loving the diversity now you know but um the standout is miss uh lindsey vaughn who did her shoot in body paint so you know usually the swimsuit models are in bathing suits she decided to do her shoot in full body paint now you know a lot of uh you know celebrities like to do behind the scenes of their whatever they're doing photo mm -hmm. shoots and um you know she decided to do pull-ups during you know she's like i really train i really work out this is mm -hmm. what i really do on a daily basis but in the scene i guess she you know the natural sunlight hits her body paint and she's completely <laughs> exposed. <laughs> so, you know, I guess Sports Illustrated got way more than, yeah. you know, they uh, 
Green All I gotta say to that is Tiger Woods, y'all. That's, you know that's Tiger Woods' old thing right there. Yeah, but so. I don't know if she was thick enough to be in this issue because this was like supposed to be the thick, for, you know. No, it was Tiger Woods. Figure. You know, they still had to have, you know, the, the average, as they mm -hmm. say. But then, you know, they had that <laughs> curvy model. And Sports Illustrated, you guys are 2016. You guys are doing better. So, yeah, you know, on that note, that is, you know, my news. Definitely stay tuned and follow me and keep up with me every week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's always good times when Lady Bug comes on onto it the is. set. Now, um, Bino, really quick mm -hmm. for the people at home that don't know, just let them know where they can get the music, where okay. they can follow you on the web or Instagram, All right. or whatever. Um, you can go to my website www.imbino.com. I m b y n o e. My Twitter is at i m bino. Um, my IG is at i m bino. You can get my Luke Eleven Twenty Three project is on iTunes, Google Play, Title, everything. The same with still ride on um ride on everything. You get that off my website too, man. Look for the gold blooded to be out the end of March or early April. It's gonna change the world, or trust me. Uh, we also have that uh H two O video for Balling for Peace. We're, we're gonna ride out with that. Um quick final thought, uh Trip Young. Before we uh, oh, ride out with Bowling for Peace. Uh, listen, man, it's just been it's been a good week. You know, Riot Squad is in yeah. the building, man. Definitely, Definitely appreciate you coming through it and showing us love. I appreciate it, man. On the set. And um, It's been cold too, man. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> and we know the parking is crazy yeah. <laughs> out there. But uh we definitely appreciate you uh coming through, man. Yeah, anytime, man. Thank uh, you for having me. For Ladybug, Bino, and Trip Young, I'm Mark the Statman Skevish. Thanks for joining us on Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, here with a recap of Born for Peace, the one and only uh, H2O. Myself chopped it up uh, at Born for Peace. Yeah. Hello everyone, Mark the Statman Skevich here for the second annual Born for Peace with the one and only H2O. Now, your second year H2O, great success. The place was packed. You scored about 90 points. You were close to that Will Chamberlain record. Uh, what, what's your take on the turnout and how everything went? Man, the turnout was beautiful. It was everything I expected. You know, I worked really hard to get people out. I did, like, so much more promo than I did last year. And I think because people knew about it last year, they were anticipating it for this year. And we, uh, you know, we exceeded our expectations. Yeah, the people that missed it last year didn't want to miss out yet again. And this one, uh, another great year. You had the kids come out for the first game, and your team won. Uh, did, you, did you were you involved in any of the training there? That we'll call the H2O team, but were you involved in any of the training or? Oh, that's, that's those, those are my kids. Uh, so my kids was playing another uh, uh, Almighty Force kids, and uh, we 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 won that game, and uh, it was pretty dope, man. I, I I wasn't able to coach them, but my assistant coach yeah. coached them to victory. All right, you got to hand out the MVP trophies over after yeah. that game. And no handing out the MVP trophy. You can pretty much hand it out to yourself after, after the other game. You, you were out there. Uh, NBA Jam style, the announcer was saying, I, I saw you hit three three-pointers in a row. Did you practice extra hard for this one? Oh, well, last, last year I wasn't able to play any basketball coming into this. I tried all week. I played a couple of games leading up to this, so. I did work. I did work out, and I did work hard for the event, and uh, and it came out a success. But I did work on my game, and I did train and play for this game this year. Got to let people know in case they didn't know last year you were coming uh, through with authority this time around. Uh, what else do you have coming up? I know bowling for peace isn't just basketball. You did football. You did bowling. What's the next event on this year? Um, so I have another. I've been getting into music, and I've been um, kind of helping out my boy Graf and kind of managing him and stuff like that. So my next show is the Queens Get the Money uh, concert at uh, Black Thorn on March 3rd. And then we also have a concert in South by Southwest with Graf and friends out there in uh, Austin, Texas. Nice, nice. A lot of things going on in the Bowling for Peace brand. Uh, great performance, great event. Uh, glad to be a part of it yet again. Uh, H2O, thanks for having us here on Real Fans Real Talk. Oh, guys, Always a pleasure, and uh, you were definitely bowling out there. Thanks a lot, man. Maybe next time you'll get the Will Chamberlain record. I'm going to try, man. I'm going to try. People always say, hey, man, how do you do so well in your own event? I mean, I just flew out there and play and have fun, you know? Were you supposed to not do well? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll you're supposed to tone it back a little bit. 
Yeah, you gotta let, let people know what it is. You had Skyscraper out there scoring some points too. It seemed like a little unfair advantage. It seems what? I saw Anthony Mason Jr. on the other squad, so it's not like you stacked a two unfair. Actually had, they, they had a stacked squad as well, but um, you know, it's kind of even. And, and, and you see it in the score, the tie game at the end of the day. We we weren't able to finish it. We wanted to get some of the performances in, but it was dope, man. It was dope. Yeah, last year was an overtime thriller. This year, I thought it was going to be another overtime thriller, but we ended it off in a tie. Some people didn't like that, but it was a great performance all around, great basketball, and uh, they got to see some great rapping and uh, everything else that comes along with Balling for Peace. Yeah. Are we going to have a slam dunk contest next year? We might. We were supposed to have a three-point contest as well, but, you know, the time didn't permit us to do that. So, um, you know, I have the trophy, the three-point contest. The real reason was they heard that I was entered in the three-point yeah, contest, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they were like, let's just give him the trophy because that's it. He just wore it all day like yeah, you. you know? I mean, it would have been a little bit of a battle if you were in it too, but you weren't in it, so it was pretty much hands down, much. give it to me, and that's it. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what would have happened. All right, well. <laughs> All right, well, once again, I had a blast here on the second annual Bowling for Peace. If you missed the first one and you missed the second one, you know you got to be there at the third one. But uh, once again, Real Fans, Real Talk, Mark the Statman, Skevich here with H2O. Great event yet again, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for having me, Bowling for Peace. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, realtalk.com. Where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, realtalk.com got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Is Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only...